All right, well, Hawkeyes begin a stretch of games that I am calling must wins. And Saturday, maybe trickier than people initially thought heading into the season. They've got a Washington Husky team coming in pretty hot, knocking off the defending national champions, Michigan, this past weekend. What are some keys and some things to watch for in Kinnick on Saturday morning? We'll talk about it in just a moment. want to first thank Under the Kitchen. Randy's got a new print with none other than Doak Walker Award candidate, Caleb Johnson. Yes, I know Ashton Genty's out there, but Caleb Johnson has had a wonderful season so far, and they need him to get back on track this Saturday. Check out all the artwork from Randy down to Under the Kitchen in Mitchellville. You can visit his website. It's underthekitchen.square.site. You can also visit Under the Kitchen on Facebook. So the Hawkeyes and the Huskies on Saturday morning, 11 a.m. Central Time. Big noon kickoff on Fox. And after Washington dropped a game to Rutgers a couple of weeks ago, I think a lot of people sort of wrote this game off. This is a Washington team that lost a ton last season. Of course, Michael Penix Jr. It starts with their quarterback who got drafted by Atlanta. But hey, let's not forget that they brought in Will Rogers, who was a prolific guy at Mississippi State. His numbers have been exceptionally good this year. And their offensive numbers as a team have been exceptional. They're Top three in the conference in passing. They're top five in the conference in basically every rushing category. Jonah Coleman is their lead back. He's a workhorse, not a real big guy at 5'9", but he packs a punch at about 225. And he's a guy who's going to cause a challenge for Iowa up the middle. Now, here's the deal. Iowa struggled at times last week to stop the likes of Trevion Henderson and that backfield for Ohio State. But that is one of the best duos in the country Jonah Coleman's one guy. He is the workhorse. He's going to take the majority of the carries this week. I expect Iowa's defense to really play well, but expect Will Rogers to take shots toward Deshaun Lee's side of the field. Barring something unforeseen, I would expect Deshaun Lee to start. I think TJ Hall might still be listed as the starter. Deshaun Lee is the starter right now, and I thought he actually played pretty well against Abuka and Jeremiah Smith, depending on who he was matched up with. Uh, in the last game at Ohio State. Those are just exceptionally talented receivers. Washington, numbers-wise, actually beat Rutgers. Like, if you look through all the statistics, they were better than the Scarlet Knights. It's almost hard to imagine how Rutgers found a way to win that game. The big outlying stat in that one was critical down conversion. That is a big storyline. Can Iowa be good on critical downs? They were actually really good against Ohio State, especially in that first half, converting third downs, and moving the chains. That will be critical this week. But it's impressive what Washington did against Michigan last week. I mean, they dominated in basically every category, and they're just solid across the board. You wouldn't expect that for a team that lost their coaching staff, their top players, a bunch of receivers, all these skill position spots. They were so good last year going to the championship game. But you got to give that coaching staff, Jed Fish, credit. They have found a way to rebuild and maybe – just quicker than people would expect. But we see that at places at times, teams being rebuilt quicker than in past years because of the fact that you have the transfer portal, et cetera. But maybe the depth there at Washington was a little bit stronger um, than we initially thought. So this should be an interesting one. Here's a bold prediction. I am going out on a limb here. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but this is a bold prediction. I think if Iowa wins this game in Kinnick, they win out the rest of the season. Now, I'm not a betting man, would never gamble on these types of things, but that's a pretty bold prediction. I know Kyle Spence, a good friend of ours here on the show, has talked about how hard it is to imagine Iowa winning out simply because the probabilities state that, you know, Iowa is going to be favored 60% to 40% in this one, 55 to 45 in this one. What are the likelihood? What's the likelihood of Iowa winning all those games? Well, it's low. However, Iowa has found a way to overcome those odds. So often under Kirk Ferentz, I even go back to 2021, year of poor offense, terrible offense. I could use even stronger language than that. 2023, another good example. They won 20 games combined those two seasons. And you may say, devil's advocate may say, but Corey, they didn't win against anybody good. You could argue there's not a game left on the schedule in which Iowa will not be favored. At last glance at ESPN's FPI, ESPN has Iowa winning every single game left on the schedule. This game opened up Iowa as one-and-a-half-point favorites in spite of the momentum behind the Huskies. They may be slightly favored on the road at Maryland. Iowa would be potentially 
and then Wisconsin, Nebraska both come to Kinnick. We've talked about the schedule, but this is a team in Washington that is catching fire at the right time. If Iowa can get past the Huskies, I think they got an excellent chance of building momentum themselves and potentially running the table. And wouldn't that be something if Iowa finished 10 and 2? Because again, I think they got an excellent chance of going to Indy. For some reason, that gets under people's skin when I say Iowa might win out and go to Indy. But the math is what the math is, and the schedule is what the schedule is. So I'll be coming out with my score prediction later tonight. Appreciate you tuning in. Hit that thumbs up button, the like button before you leave. We'll talk to you tomorrow after the game for Iowa postgame right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm.